Okay, here's an exciter uh, that I'm sure you're going to find interesting. It's, I guess you can call it a self-run if you want to, except for the fact that it is connected to an earth ground through the lab ground system. What I have here is a double AV plug. I have an AV plug off of the ground, and I have an AV plug off of the lower tap or the beginning of the tower coil. Off of the first tap of the tower coil, I come back through an L3 into the 400 picofarad output capacitor. Now, also what I have set up here is, this is an RF voltmeter probe. And if you watch up here as I lay it next to that coil, you'll see that we're getting a reading of about uh, 40 to 39 millivolts. Here is my probe to my spectrum analyzer, which I'm just laying by the tower coil. And so we can see now that we have about 18 to, well, okay, it's bouncing around, but what I want to do is I want to take this and I'm going to move it up to the, I'm going to move it up to the load on the coil, and you watch what happens with the voltmeter. You can see that we have about a hundred and went way overboard there, about a, let's call it a hundred millivolts there. And that's up here near the coil. I'll move it back down, back to the L3. And we got about 22. Now let me show you here, let me change hands for a second and get my little handy dandy probe, which <laughs> has just the LED on it in this plastic rod so that I don't uh, act as an antenna myself. And let me show you here this red lead when I touch the top hat of this coil. You see that right there? Now let's go down here to the where the L3 goes in. And you'll see that it just barely lights up. In fact, it's very hard to even, even see it lighting at all. Okay, we go back up here again, and of course you see that. So you see that we have an extremely high voltage on the end of this coil at the top hat. We have a little voltage down here. That is confirmed by the fact that if we take and lay that probe there, and we look up here, now where I've got it positioned, I have 57 millivolts. Let's go ahead and move it up here to where it's in close proximity to the top hat. And you're going to see that we go off scale. Let me take and go up another scale here. Okay, and so I'll get close to it again. And of course it depends on how close I am. Last time we had 100. I can get fairly close. There's 140 millivolts. So it proves the point that uh, this coil and the top hat are indeed resonating and they possess more energy here than what's actually coming out of the exciter. Which goes along with exactly what I've been trying to say for years. The exciter is stimulating the local frame to where energy is captured. It's released from the local frame. The energy is feeding back through the lower part of the coil through this AV plug in conjunction with this ground connection AV plug and powering the sec exciter into oscillation to cause the coherence of the energy at the coil. So needless to say, there's a higher level RF here than what we have down here. And of course, some of that could be explained, you know, <laughs> if you want to look at phasing and everything. But uh, the idea is the exciter is being driven from what's apparent here down through the coil into the AV plug in conjunction with this ground connection going back to an earth ground.
So in essence, there's no battery in here at all. That's easily seen. There's no hidden coupling going up there. I always get accused of this. This is just a keyboard laying underneath here that goes to my computer I use for computations. So that pretty much shows this one. I can go into more detail, but uh, actually, you got to realize too that the transistor is the proprietary transistor that we're currently working with, and uh, it is a real Hummer. Let's put it that way.